Good morning viewers. We're in the great Aussie bush and I'm gonna give you a rundown on my custom rig from Finale. There has been a lot of people getting their knickers in a knot because I rode it at one race and yeah, then it got put away. So everyone's like, where's your custom bike? It's all right, it's still kicking and we're still ripping it. I'm about to film a medal Monday on it too. So stay tuned for that. So yeah, it's like a special project where each of the team riders get to design or have a lot of input into what their favorite bike would be. And it's just to ride for one race. It's a pity my race was terrible <laughs> in finale, but the bike's still sick. So Texi had his in Leo Gang, the digger bike. We can insert a shot if you didn't watch the vlogs. Um, and then Casper's gonna have one too in, I think Ludenville. And I hear it's pretty sick as well. So you're gonna wanna stay tuned for that one as well. Yeah, when, when I was negotiating my, or finalizing my contract with YT, one thing I really wanted was to be able to design a custom bike and custom kits and obviously they're pumped and on board because they're uncaged so yeah this is my version of an uncaged yt capra it's like everything that i want components colors make everything custom down to the valves there's something about the creative process of having an idea in your head and working through it with, in this case with the team, I got to work with Dennis and JP, which was awesome working straight with the designer. But yeah, working through the stages and coming to the final masterpiece and it being like what you pictured. Sometimes that's not all the always the case, but yeah, when it all comes together and it's exactly how you pitch it in your head, it's like really rewarding. So. I'm really pumped that YT are on board with this stuff because yeah, I enjoy it. Obviously I do all the merch and stuff like that. And it's just something else away from writing that yeah, I enjoy spending time doing. This is an XL, XL front and rear. I know we we're trying the large swing arm in finale and earlier on in the year just to make it a bit more playful, but haven't had too much time after Tassie to play around with that. Like with my hand injury and then getting really sick overseas. My main focus now is just getting back healthy and well, I'm back healthy now and I'm just training really hard and main focus is just to get comfy and I'm feeling comfy with the setup as it is and I don't want to change too much. So yeah, we're just charging in for these last couple races and then might play around with that again in the off season before coming into next year. Yeah, we'll start off with the colors. With this bike, I yeah, I've always really liked pink. I used to run the pink gloves all the time when I was racing downhill. And then blue and white are just two colors I thought went really well with pink. So I sent those that color palette to Dennis, the YT designer, and told him, yeah, I want all those on the bike. And then he came up with the fade and the, like the stripes up the back there. But... I also really wanted pearl white here. It's like my favorite color on a car. It's got a bit of a sparkle, mate. You know, a bit of pop in the sun. Loves a bit of pop in the sun. And we've also got the chrome logos here and on the fork, which is sick. It's a bit Metal Monday, you know, and Fox came through with a mad helmet um, that's got like dripping metal and stuff on it. So that kind of ties it in with the helmet and all other silver parts. I'm getting big on the silver parts. I told you they're coming back. I told you, you heard it here first. Look, pedals, calipers, derailleur. They got the bloody, the silver highlights. Got the silver highlights on the levers, mate. Humming. The build's pretty similar to my Red Rocket, but I've changed a few things and yeah, we've got a few different colored, like fresh bits on here. So I'll give you a quick run through of the parts and like stuff I've changed since the last bike check. One of my favorite surprises on this rig when I first saw it were the i9 hubs. More of a visual surprise. Um, yeah, hot pink anodized hubs look insane. They match the bike so well. To be honest, I didn't race on them because 
I've never really used them before. I've used them once. I've got a set on my Jesse as well. They sound insane, but I always race DT because it's what I know and I've never had any issues so far. But yeah, Texie runs them. He loves the real high engagement, which yeah, makes them sound sick. But also, a little sneak peek, little DT. May or may not be coming out with a super high engagement hub for me to test in the coming weeks. So keep your little peepers peeled for that. We'll be bringing it to you first on Wemo TV, but don't tell anyone. Also, I'll get in trouble. No screenshots. No screenshots. You know the drill. Unless you're new, screenshotters will be prosecuted. Also, we got that top secret sh black box shock that I had on in Tassie. The big boy 3000. That's not actually what it's called, but yeah, we can't talk about that. Apart from, I got it back in because I had a few, <laughs> few tweaks made to it and it's feeling pretty insane. Also with the shock we're running, I'm running offset bushes to shorten the eye to eye and just slacken the bike out a bit, which I'm really liking the feel of. Just, I always, you know, if you've seen my other bike checks that I like my bike sitting in a bit at the rear, which is sometimes why I run the higher bars. But even with the higher bars on this bike, I felt like I was just a bit high in the rear. So this helps it heaps in steep stuff. It helps it in cornering and yeah, sometimes when I first did it, I'd like send some stuff and I was used to having a pretty high bottom bracket and like clip my bash guard. So got to be mindful of that now, but I feel like the benefits are outweighing the, the negatives. And it just, yeah, it just feels, just the balance of the bike just feels like right a lot better than it did for me. Um, yeah, so with the fork, we, I've gone back to 180. In Tassie, I was on the 190. I was on the lounge chair, remember? I was trying to have that thing calm for Yaz so I could hang on to those like longer, rougher runs in Medina just after I broke my hand. But we're back on the 180. And I think I'm just running one token now because the whole new setup with the Zebs is pretty rampy already. And for the pressure, I'm running... Uh, shit, I don't know the pressure. Have to ask Major Payne. Give Major Payne a buzz. Hey, Payne, you mad dog. We're doing a bike check and I'm just wondering what the pressure in me forks is, bro. 75 PSI, you fucking sicko. All right, cheers, bro. See you in a couple weeks. Bit of compression stats for you. You're supposed to go from fully closed, but I run all my stuff pretty open, so I'm just gonna give you from open and you can work that closed nonsense out. High speed, we've got two from open, and low speed, I think I've got five from open. Rebound. Mate, this is important stuff, this rebound stuff. Where is it? Oh no! The painted fork does not have the rabbit and the turtle. All right, we'll do this one from fully closed. Oh no, I'm lost Stagsy. Oh, no. <laughs> I don't know where I was. Yes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 10, 11, 12. There you go kids, copy those settings exactly and you'll have the fastest forks on the planet, guaranteed. Make sure you know which side the rabbit and the tortoise is. You know the saying mate, um, slow and steady wins the race. On that note, that white fork is probably one of my favorite things on the bike. So thank you to the powers that be at RockShox for allowing me to run that. It's insane and it made my day. And guards, still running them. Mate, I've fallen in love. I've gone to the dark side. I'm feeling moto as hell, bro. Handguards are on there. Feel like they're just a little, I don't know, little like feelers, you know, like little whiskers for the trees. <laughs> Keep these knuckles intact. So far, paired up with my Fox knuckle dusters, my hands have been safe this year. So I'm gonna keep running them. <clears throat> Do 
transmission. We have to make a note of that because I've been running it now for, I think last time I did the bike track, I would only run it for a, a race or two, but yeah, I've been running it all year and it seriously is probably the biggest upgrade in components we've had in the last couple years. Like the change going to that is insane, dude. Being able to change gears and sprint at the same time up a pinch or something in enduro is game changing, mate. So shout out to SRAM and their transmission because big fan of that stuff. And it's bulletproof. You would have seen all the breathers just standing on it and shit in like this, like look at this. Like this is how I go over my race run before each stage, bro. Transmission just took a big thing, mate. No, that's just my pre-race run ritual. Oh, it's used to oh, that. Sorry, sorry. Still running that Axis reverb. You know I love that shit. No cables, no fuss, no worries. But it has been three years, 1,095 long days and nights that I'm still waiting for my 200. So we are currently at 170, but I'm still, I'm still holding faith, people. One day. Rock shocks one day. <laughs> These legs need it. <laughs> we got the code ultimate stealth levers on. And you know I'm pairing them with those silver calipers. I've still got the top secret on me red rocket, but I've been riding that and I've only got one set of those, so I'm not trying to swap them in between bikes when I barely ride this. I'm trying to keep this thing fresh as hell, you know, so. Yeah, running these. 200 mil rotor. You know I like those big berthers to pull me up ASAP. Got the big boy mud hugger on there. Pretty self-explanatory, just hugs all that mud. So I don't have to hug it. I'm not even gonna go over my magic pressures again, bro. Like. <laughs> If you don't know the magic pressures by now, go do some research. Look at some other videos. Damn. No, you got to give them the pressure in bar. Right, people. We have 1.5 bro bros in the rear. 1.2 bro bros in the front. We got to also match and customize some kits to the frame paint, which turned out insane like yeah this is my this is my uncaged dream build and kit combo man look how sick that is boy he's got the moimo Moi tv butt patch on there for me miami vice bit of retro bit of retro inspiration you know yeah this new stuff is sick dude super stretchy super breathable really flexible and it's like a nice tight slim fit go on to the days of those baggy pants man these just fit so good but this has been sick like i've never actually tested gear in my whole career like this is the third set of yt gear we've tested just this year and it's just been getting better and better i've always just been given like a new product by a gear company like here's our latest thing and you go wear it whereas yeah, with this gear, we've actually been riding and racing in it and telling JP and the crew uh, what we like, what we don't like, what we think needs changing. So yeah, this YT performance wear is getting pretty hectic. They also do a short sleeve jersey as well. But it's mad. I think, um, I think that's a wrap, people. We're going to go swing off the back, film Metal Monday. Not sure when it's going to be coming out because I think this one's for the YT YouTube, but I will be doing a post on it. So, yeah, keep your eyes peeled um, to see this beautiful masterpiece in action. You like that shit? Subscribe that shit, <laughs>